A while back, I did a video on how we store data or information on various types of media. But how do we actually transmit that information from one place to another? The answer is we use waves, usually electromagnetic waves. And in fact, we use almost the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, X-rays and gamma rays. Well, maybe not gamma rays. Okay, great. But I want to ask you a quick question. Have a look at this wave I'm going to draw. How much information is on this wave? There's a poll up there. I'll give you a few seconds to answer it. If you said no information at all, you're absolutely right. These perfect sine waves that we first come across contain none of the information we're trying to send. They are simply a carrier on which we can put data. So really we need to look at how we do that. Before we can get into that, we need to understand the properties that waves have. In fact, there's three of them. First, there's the amplitude. That is the height of the waveform. Secondly is the frequency. That is related to the period over which this wave oscillates. Take one over that, essentially the number of waves per second, and that's the frequency. And finally, one you may not be so familiar with is phase. That essentially tells you where along the sine wave you are. So here would be zero degrees, 90, 180, 270, 360 degrees. So giving a phase tells you exactly where along an oscillation period you are. The key to putting information onto a carrier wave then is simply changing or modulating those properties of the wave. Now actually the term modulation is something you may have come across. AM and FM on analog radio stand for amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. But in a digital age, we have rebranded the word modulation to shift keying. So what does this actually look like? Well, I've devised a game that you can play to get a sense of this. All you need is at least three people. Ah, right, got some people over here. Hello. Now, this game is a bit like Chinese Whispers, that's what we actually call it here in the UK, and that game where you draw like a head and a body and a thing, you know, with the folding paper. I have no idea what that's called. If you do know, let me know in the comments below. We'll start with the easiest type that we can called amplitude shift keying, which is essentially changing the amplitude depending on the signal we're trying to send. Now, first up, we're going to pick three letters to choose. There can be any letter of the alphabet, so I'm just going to fill those in here. And what we're going to do is convert that into how a computer actually stores this in binary, a series of ones and zeros, on and off. There's a standard way of doing this. It's known as ASCII, and you can use this table here to convert between letters uh, their ASCII numbers, and then what that is in binary. So we can fill that out on this column here. Once I've got my binary sequence, I'm going to put that into a binary wave. That's something that looks a bit like a wave, but not very sinusoidal because it's got all these sharp jumps between one and zero. Fill that in like so. And that is my go done. So I need to now fold this paper over where it says first fold and pass it on. And in comes player two. Now, obviously because of the fold, all I can see is the binary wave. I have no idea uh, what that actually means in terms of the letters. My job is to encode this onto the carrier wave. Now, because we're doing amplitude shift keying in this one, I'm gonna be changing the amplitude. So every time I see a zero, I'm gonna draw a very small amplitude uh, wave. And where I see a one, I'm gonna draw a large one. So that's pretty simple. 
That's my job done. We now have an encoded carrier wave to transmit. So I am gonna fold over here so we can't see the binary wave and we can only see the encoded carrier wave that now contains the information on it and I'm gonna pass it over here. Which means it's now my go and my job is essentially to decode this wave back into binary and then letters. So based on the carrier wave, wherever the amplitude is small, I'll put a zero, wherever it's large, I'll put a one. So fill out the binary and I will compare that with the ASCII codes and I can see it's Y, A, S. So Yaz, is that right? Ah, yeah, it is. That's great. And what we can do now is essentially the same thing, but instead use phase shift keying. That means we're gonna essentially vary the position of the phase each time to convey the information. This one's a little bit harder. So I'm gonna do the same thing as before, put into a binary wave, fold it over, and pass it on. My job is now to encode it. This is a bit tricky. So wherever it's a zero, it looks like a normal sine wave, but wherever it's a one, it's a flipped sine wave, like so. Uh, so let's continue that along like so for this go. Okay, I think I've done that right. Fold it over, pass it to player three. My turn to decode. So I think that's there, like so. Turn that into binary, letters, and there's the mistake. That should have been a one. It's not easy. Now you can have a go playing these games as well. Check in the description. You can download all of these sheets to play along. And I've got a couple of questions for you. Based on the properties of the original carrier wave, what is the data rate? And secondly, is there a way that you can think of that you're not changing the properties of that carrier wave, but you're able to get more information onto the wave? Have a think, write your answers. There'll be a follow-up video to tell you how.